Hi guys! Welcome back to another colorful Keto with Dory. I have something extra special for you today for getting over the hump and we are getting together with Cecilia. It's been more than a hot minute. It's been well over a year since we got to go live with her. We're going to talk about all the things that are new in her life and we're going to talk about being brave enough to strike a new path. Darling! Hey, Dory! Yay! Okay, so let me flip around my camera on Facebook because for some reason I have it facing the wrong way and now they can see you! <laughs> hey! Hey! Dory, hey. love hey. Oh, I love you, girl. It has been too love long. You. So let's start out with introduce it's yourself. I have this. I had a reaction. I got lashes put on today. Oh and no! Course, I had this right before we go live. I'm like, what the heck is going on? What is up with that? Rocket anyway. <laughs> right? So why don't we start with, tell us a little bit about you, because it's been well over a year since we've done a live together, and I missed you, girl. I know, I missed you too. I'm Cecilia. Um, I have been doing keto for a long time. I met Dory uh, through the keto space and that lifestyle we met at KetoCon. 2018. Yes. A over a year ago, and we've seen each other again at KetoCon this past year, which is a lot of fun. Um, I live in Lakeland, Florida. I have a business doing permanent makeup, and have two kids. And Yay! So, I want to talk a little bit about, give your shameless plug for your permanent makeup business. Where can people find you? Where can they follow you? So yes, my um, handle is at Epic Cosmetic Studio, and that can be found on Instagram and Facebook, or I have a website, uh, EpicCosmeticStudio.com, so I can be found on there. I do eyebrows and eyeliner, lips now, 3D areola tattooing for women who've had mastectomies, I do that now, nice. and a, a few other services as well, so all and that if, can be found on my social media platforms. Yay, and if anybody doesn't know, I'm a big fan of that stuff. I really sure am. I, I love the convenience of not having to darken your eyebrows yeah. every day. Yeah. And do this and it don't come off. <laughs> yes, because how many times have we been in that situation where we spend forever doing our makeup and then it's hot or it's rainy or it's humid and then, I don't know about you, but I look like a big hot mess. <laughs> well, if you are ever in the area, if you're in Florida, come check me out. I'll hook you up. Yes. Catch up. Yay. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what's changed in your life since I saw you last. We kind of touched on it when we chatted, but I wanted to save it for our main discussion today. So I'll let you take it and tell us what's kind of different for you lately. So as we discussed, um, I have not been doing keto lately. I plan on getting back on, but I know we talked about things that I could describe or the differences I've noticed since I've been off of it. And it's probably been a little over a month or so that at first I was like in and out, in and out. And then I was just like, forget yeah. it. And then, yeah. So, but I plan on get back on, but anyway, some of the changes and differences I did notice, um, for one, uh, my energy was not consistent and was not the same as before. I feel like it did affect my sleep some, I didn't feel as rested in the morning. At first, it wasn't too bad, but then little by little, I'm sure as things started getting off balance is when I, I'm really starting to notice it more now, um, really depending on the coffee in the morning. I still do my coffee with just a little heavy cream, Yeah. so there's still things I stick to. I don't try to go overboard when I have been off. I haven't been trying to go overboard too much, more like moderation. Um, my skin changed. I started... Um, getting uh, a small breakouts here and there. I never had a lot of acne, but before I felt like when I was doing keto, and I did carnivore for a little bit too, yeah. I got a lot of uh, compliments on my skin. People still tell me that, but a lot of it's makeup. <laughs> but I used to get several, several compliments about how well my skin had a glow to it. So I really felt like that was part, especially like I said, the small breakout, like a pimple here and there or whatever. I really felt a difference, seen a difference with that. Um, bloat, definitely bloat back. That's back. Uh, I'm trying to think what else that I noticed. Um, 
mm, maybe not so much my hair. Those are like some of the biggest things, like I said, that I've seen. Well, and I've I always think... been on the slim side, but I chose to do keto initially because I had lab work showing that I was heading towards being a pre-diabetic, and it does ran, run in my his, family history, so I, it's not too surprising. Yeah. So. Well, but only fat people get diabetes, though, right? Like, you, you can't be unhealthy if, if you're thin. If you're thin and you're walking around in, in the good bikini body, that means healthy, though, right? That's what I always tell people. And I'm a nurse as well. I didn't actually even mention that before. But I'm a nurse, worked in the ICU for 10 years. And just because, yes, you're skinny does not mean you are healthy at all. The inside tells a whole other story. That's actually the most dangerous type of person to be. One who can tend to eat anything they want and not gain weight. It's a very false misconception by far. So a fast metabolism might not be the gift that all us fat girls always thought it was. (laughs) That was our dream. Exactly. It's like a blessing and a curse. Yes. Well, then you you kind of miss out, I think, on some of the health markers as well, because you're not as focused on how you feel. I know that before I started keto personally, I never took stock of any of those feelings. I never paid attention to, am I sleeping well? Am I... Am I having bathroom issues? Am I having cramping? None of those things really occurred to me. It was just my everyday, everyday. And I feel like some people feel bad when they get off track. But follow me through this one. Because for me, I think it's a blessing. I really, I really do. Because for someone who doesn't know keto, who's never ketoed, they don't understand the health benefits. When you go off, yes, and when you go off track, you remember, you remember, God, I felt better, I slept better, I had more energy, I forgot to mention that, Mm -hmm. right, and you can remember things, everything isn't leaking out of your sieve brain anymore, and for me, with my depression and my anxiety, I, I literally felt like my brain was a sieve and I just, I couldn't retain information. I, I couldn't keep on track. I couldn't keep things organized. So, yeah, I didn't feel as sharp. I don't feel as sharp. I'm still there, but it's just, it's a difference. You, like you said. You feel it. So let's talk a little bit about what led you off track because I know it's not just you. This is September. I am getting flooded, flooded with messages saying, Dory, I was going to be keto all summer and, and I don't know what happened. I had one meal or it was one day and now it's September and I just realized I've kind of been off track all summer. Oh, the time flies like that because you'll be like, oh, I'll just get the back on before you know it. A week yep, tomorrow. Five, a month went by. <laughs> but yeah, I um, actually moved, did a move. Okay. And went through that and just some other lifestyles changes and probably some stressors and mixed in that. And that's where all that, it just started becoming convenient to do this and that. And so that was a big change. That was a big uh, change for me that kind of pushed me into just like kind of just put it off for a while. And I feel like most of us spend a lot of our life doing that. Being in that position where we say, you know what, it's it's convenient today. It's okay for today. Do you know what? I'm moving. I'm busy. I'm just going to grab a pizza or I'm going to grab Chinese food. Yeah. And then tomorrow I'm going to get a good meal and I'm going to back on track. So bring us to that moment where it's the next day and it's the day you're going to get back on track. And, and how you go from I've woken up in the morning, today's the day, to eh, screw it. It could be tomorrow. Well, as you know, sometimes we plan out our days, and they don't always go according to that. Mine definitely don't. And so it was one of those moments where I'm like, tomorrow, and then there was something that interfered with that, sidetracked me from that, and then once again, and you don't think of it, it could be just like a a bread roll, and you're like, oh, that one won't hurt, That, that, but I believe it's those cravings. They start sneaking up on you, and before you know it, that's another thing that gets you. But yeah, just sometimes in my day, something sidetracks me and throws me off. And then I'm like, oh, I'll be okay. But it's little by little. And that's and that's how you get hooked back on things. I can tell. I can tell, too. Um, I'm hungrier more often. 
And I'm like, I, it's been an hour, hour and a half. Why am I still hungry or wanting to snack? And before I felt more satiated, I didn't need to eat as much. So I definitely can tell I am definitely not yet where I once was. And I miss that. I do miss it. I remember the first time I ate something off plan. And I remember having a false sense of security. And I remember thinking, oh, I've been keto for like eight months now. I've got this. I've got this. I'm good, girl. I, I know this. I'm not going to go off plan. But then my girlfriend brought over her tin of Christmas cookies that she brings me every year. And you can't be rude right? And not eat them. So I thought, well, you know, I'm eight months in two or let's be honest, maybe five cookies won't hurt me. And I ate the cookies and I woke up in the morning in such distress. I couldn't poop. I was in pain. My stomach hurt. And I, I, all five alarms, I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. I might, I might actually die. And I set out the alarms and I messaged all my admin and I said, you know, A, what do I do? And B, do I tell anybody? Because right. that's, that's a really hard position to be in when you're leading people and you're showing people the way. And I really sat down and I thought about it and I thought, am I helping anybody by pretending it never happened to me? I don't feel like I am. I don't think it's beneficial to put on my rose colored glasses and move on and pretend like nothing happened. So I made a video about it and I just said, hey, you know what, maybe or maybe you didn't eat something you shouldn't have, not saying, you know, not judging, but this is the solution. And I made a really fun flax muffin and we moved on, but it gave me the opportunity to be honest with my group members and to really talk with them about it. And it also made me feel less isolated because in that moment, we all fall back to that. Oh, I'm so stupid guilt. I'm stupid. Why would I do this? Well, I can't tell anybody I did that because they're going to be like, Oh girl, what were you, what were you thinking? And it's almost like when you get back together with a toxic ex and you start to sneak it because you don't want your friends to know and you don't want your family to know. It's and then, it. and then you're in this relationship with your carb ex and all of a sudden one day you have to be like, okay, so I'm dating carbs again. <laughs> I like that. I took the jerk that back. People, you know, you do that because people need to know that we are human and we're not perfect and it is going to happen. It's going to happen to the best of us sometimes and it's okay not to beat yourself up too bad. I'm not, I haven't been beating myself up. My body's doing it enough for me. Right. It's feeling the it's only effects. So, yeah. But that's so, good that you did that. And I, that's why I'm not when you told, you know, when I told you I said honestly I haven't been doing keto, you were like that's fine. That's great. It's fine. It is. Honestly, this is something that we need to talk about because it's, I feel like it's something that we all deal with in secret and in private. There, I don't honestly, there are people in the keto community who say, oh, I've never cheated. I've never eaten off plan. I've never, right. never, never. And I, I call bullshit. I do because we're all human. We are all imperfect. I even know people who are using keto for medical treatment. And even when it's dependent upon your health, there's still moments where you're going to slip. Yep. We're human. So what's your plan for getting back on plan? Because I feel like that's something we're discussing a lot in my group this month. Okay, so I've fallen off plan. You know, I fell off the wagon. I drug it in the woods. I set it on fire. I toasted marshmallows. Now what? My plan, hopefully, here soon, um, maybe October. I've never been one that worried about the holidays so much. Yep. But I don't know. I may ride it out. And just be in really modified things and maybe like fully like get back on like the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, we'll see. A lot of it depends on how I feel because then there are days like here within this week that I've just been feeling rough and I'm like, maybe it's time to start getting back on. So I'm going to play it by ear and, and then try and give it a try. And I feel like that's okay. I feel like it's okay to not pressure yourself and say, Okay, so now I've admitted out loud, tomorrow's the day. 
Because if you pressure yourself before you're ready, guess what's going to happen? You're not committed. You're not in the right headspace, and it's not going to stick. And each time we fail something, it feeds that defeatist monster inside of us all. So I feel like take your time, do your thing. You know what? Have a little bit less carbs each day. Look at your sugars and just ease your way back in so that you don't feel deprived. That's what I plan on doing. Yeah, like slowly like wean myself back to where I was. I feel like it doesn't hit your body as hard too. Like the keto flu doesn't hit you as hard if you like, okay, I'm going to limit myself to 100 carbs, 80 50, you know, work my way. I always actually yes. recommended that for people to do. And I feel like they don't get hit with a keto flu as hard. Well, and for me, I didn't get the keto flu, but I think, again, because I didn't know anything about keto when I started, and I was like, oh my God, I'm keto AF. You think I'm not keto? Fight me. But I wasn't. I I was barely, if it fits my macros, dirty keto because there were so many there were so many ingredients I didn't realize were important to eliminate. I was still having some natural coconut sugars. I was still having some things, but it was a slow, gradual change that created a sustainable lifestyle for me. And a million times over, although I believe in keto and from my heart and soul, I would shout it from the mountaintops. If somebody isn't committed, it's not for them because it really is. It's a forever thing. Once you feel good and then you feel shitty, you'll always be chasing that desire to feel better. And you know, you can't unring the bell. Yeah, I went, I did cold turkey when I first did Kia, which was about November 2017. Okay. But I went cold turkey. So Ooh. a couple days in, I was jittery, I was feeling funny. So I know now, you know, how to approach that better. And for me, I believe it will be, like you said, gradually kind of weaning myself into that, into it. And I feel like with the past experience of living a ketogenic lifestyle, it gives you such a step up on new people. Because although maybe you're not on plan right now, you know what the plan looks like. You know what the plan feels like. You've already gone past that. I'm floating around in a sea of garbage information. You know where you're heading. And I feel like it's easier to get there when you're ready. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. Yay. So let's talk a little bit about starting a new path. Because for you, this was a big lifestyle change. And we're not 20 anymore, like, like the promo music said. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what it's like when you reevaluate your life and realize it's time to detour. Well... When you kind of, when I, for me, whenever I hit that kind of fork in the road and things of that nature, now I'm 36, so now at my age, now I've gained a little bit of wisdom. I got to, <laughs> um, but self-reflecting, I really self-reflect. I stop and try to work on that mind, body, and soul. And I know it's going to be different for other people, but that's tapping into my spiritual side, um, I need to work more on the physical, being keto, that, um, uh, making sure my mind is okay, uh, but kind of like what you said with the food change, I do feel like it kind of makes you feel a little more down, too, um, yeah. but and we're all going to approach that time where we have to make different decisions, take different paths, and it can be a blessing in disguise it can be a good thing so I start to learn things I've learned things about myself through this journey um, coming off keto just lifestyle other lifestyle changes I definitely um, learned a lot I'm very happy for well and I feel like a lot of times the paths we never intended to take are it's amazing the parts of our lives that we never expected. I never planned to find keto. I certainly never planned to get my face up on the internet and share that stuff. 
but it happened and I love every moment of it. So I want to encourage You're very good at it. Oh, thank You're you. <laughs> and um, I want one to one person at a time, you know. Well, and that's all it takes. If 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 what we do helps one person. And I know that one person who needs to hear what we're talking about today will find that. And that's how I feel about content. I feel like each live, each video, it's meant for one person. It really is. And it's going to touch one person and it will change their life and it'll be that moment for them. So, I believe, yeah, it's about finding your passions, finding your niche, finding what your purpose is on this earth. We all have a purpose and we all have a gift that something we're good at. And I don't remember where I heard it from a while back, but when you know what your passion is, it'll be something that you would actually do for free. No one would have to pay you. Like me, doing the permanent makeup, it's an art form. The brows, I've always been good at art since I was a little girl. That is a gift of mine. I would do it for free if I didn't have to pay bills. <laughs> right? You know, unfortunately, I have to, but I would love to help so many people. You know the difference that I brought, you know, oh. that does for people. And there's so many people I see, especially in public. I'm like, I could change your life, you know, but I'm scared to say anything because I don't want to offend people. Or I want to, like, drop my card in front of them or something and be like, oops. Oh, you can ask. <laughs> I feel that way about keto when I see people yes, and I just too. think, man, I could... I could change your life. I could bring you such joy. You could find all the good food. Be my new best friend. <laughs> yes, when I would, it's funny too, especially when I first, first started, but I did it forever also while I was doing keto. Um, when I have a client there laying down, I'm working on their brows, you know, I would just itch for the opportunity to tell them about <laughs> my diet. Anything positive I know that's going to help somebody, I, I, I want to tell them. Yes. So let's close out on what we can do to help not only our community, but the women we love around us. Because when you said to me, I'm not keto anymore, I could sense that fear in you that I was going to say, oh, well, pff, I don't, I don't want to talk to you and I don't want to be your friend anymore. Sorry. But I, I can't be like that. I, I don't judge no. the people in my house who don't keto. So how can we go out of our way to encourage our community that's slipped away to come back. Like you said, um, when you're ready or you kind of have that aha moment, um, I know stressors tend to throw a lot of people off and if they can try to find another vice to not derail them too much, um, that's definitely something that I would recommend okay. um, because their stressors are going to come. Everybody's going to go through something. Um, but um, try to be loving about it. And um, when you tell somebody or you're trying to encourage somebody else as well, because like I have a best friend who is very overweight and I am concerned about her. She's 42 and she's a nurse and we work together. And so I say little things, but I try not to push her too much. But anyways, yeah, just, um, Oh, I think you're frozen. Oh, no, we are frozen. Oh, you're okay. back. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. I had a no worries. Come in. No worries. But, yeah, when you're, when, you're, when you're ready, though, when you're ready or you know someone that you want to help, when they're ready, they will. All you can do is, you know, be positive, be encouraging, come from a place of love and gentleness when you are approaching. But, um, yeah, when you're, when you're ready, you'll know. And I feel like it's... Again, I'm going to bring it back to bad relationships because that's a lot of my experience when I was younger and I had friends who were in bad relationships and they would come to me and they would vent and I would get angry and I would say, leave, leave. Why don't you leave? But until that day came when she was ready to go, you can't make people break up with carbs. You can't like carbs. In my mind, they're kind of the devil, but they reel you right in and you're never going to force somebody to break up with carbs. If that's your goal, it's never going to happen. It's like you said, the relationship, when that person's ready, they have that aha moment or they're tired or they're just tired of feeling rough and bad. And I think that's probably going to end up happening to me where I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm ready to get back. Yeah. 
back on. Like I said, this this week I've been feeling a little. It's my body feeling it. Even I noticed, like in my joints. Yeah. If I sit for too long and try to get up, I'm not as springy about it as I normally am. Well. I absolutely adore you and I'm excited for your new journey and and I'm excited that you have a little bit closer perspective on how you felt before and how you feel now and I have no doubt that you'll be back when you're ready like none oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I will be back I will be back it changed my life it changed yes. my life for the better honestly it really did yes it really did well, I adore you, lady. And next time, let's book a live and talk about permanent makeup options. Because I know yeah, some okay. of my ladies wants to know. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, Lori. Have a great day, honey. Thank you, you so you. much. Take I care. love you. Bye, darling. Bye. Okay, there we go. Getting over the hump with Dory. I hope that that is helpful to some of you. I hope that this will speak to at least one person today who's struggling, who needed to hear this. And I want you to know you're not alone. Come join us in group, Colorful Keto Lifestyle, and let us know when you're struggling and we can take it on together and none of us has to be alone. So I'm gonna get our music back and I'm gonna sign out for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I think we're gonna do some fun recipes tomorrow for Thursday. What do you guys think? What are you in the mood for? I won't lie, I'm kind of obsessed with the Halloween recipes. I wanna get them out early enough that you guys have time to party plan and make some. So I have an idea in mind. Tell me what you guys think of it. I am thinking caramel cream cheese stuffed green apple cake pops with a caramel glaze mm, it just sounds so good <laughs> it sounds so good so i'll see you guys tomorrow oh no our music went away there it is have a great day guys